I feel like I'm going to start off by immediately making everyone very angry at me, but I have quite a niche opinion on Christopher Nolan. I, I have always respected his craft. I think he's a great filmmaker, but I have personally not connected with one of his films until Dunkirk and Tenant. That's the, the those two movies are the ones that I really clicked with. And I think it's because there's been a very subtle, fascinating shift in how he's making films because he has made his name doing puzzle films where the satisfaction as an audience is from you seeing all the pieces fall into place and you get a sense of order and you feel a sense of control over your existence. And then there's the opposite end of the scale, which I, I would call like the dream movie, where reality and logic may be a bit disrupted, nothing's quite making sense, and it makes you feel small. It makes you feel like a little dust particle in, in the universe. And it's the stuff that David Lynch is so great at. And I exist on that end of the scale. I love to feel small and inconsequential. It's my favourite feeling. <laughs> and I, I feel like Dunkirk and Tennant has started to inch closer to that side of the scale because this is definitely his most complicated film, but I feel like it is deliberately confusing, to be honest. So much of the dialogue is delivered under a mask, or oh, they're, they're whispering, they're whispering so much of the important exposition to the point that I started to suspect that Nolan was doing this on purpose to get people to see it a second time, like a guaranteed second ticket. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's my conspiracy I theory. I like your conspiracy there. What I am 100% confident definitely happened is that John David Washington's character is recruited by a mysterious organisation who send him off with one word, Tenet. And it will open the right doors and some of the wrong ones too. And so he meets some allies like Robert Patterson's character who is just called Neil. Which I love. I mean, just John Neil. David Washington doesn't even have a name. He's just the protagonist. He's just the protagonist. Yeah, he doesn't ever introduce himself at any point during the film. He's doesn't need like, to. Hi, I'm here to do some business. <laughs> <laughs> and then he also meets the foes like Kenneth Branagh's Andrei Sator. He has a full name. Very rich, very Russian. And he discovers that the world is facing a great threat. And more importantly, that things can change direction Things can change their direction traveling through time. So they move backwards as we move forwards. Just things go back. I know Robbie went into this whole incredible explanation, but I, I'm not that smart. Things just go backwards in this movie. Please trust me. <laughs> Don't try and explain it. Just, just feel it. There exactly. And my counterpoint to all of this would be, okay, we can get a, a grasp on the basics of this film do we need to understand every nuance and I would argue no because there's a moment where Clemence Posey turns to the protagonist and also to us and just says don't try to understand it feel it and I feel like that's all we need to know and the rest is this beautiful balletic entrancing dream logic film and the action is so spectacular at this Nolan takes that time inversion concept and weaves it into every part of every scene. I, mean, I genuinely think these are some of the best action scenes of his career. Mm. And there's one moment where it's the way he combines the, the hellish reds and the blues and then the score by Ludwig Göransson, who is stepping in for the usual collaborator Hans Zimmer here. And he's creating these low, anxious vibrations that just pulsate through every scene. I mean, it's frightening. I mean, I don't know, did you find it scary? Yeah, I mean, it was it was such a physical experience. I think seeing it in the IMAX with the sound that's in there as well. So you're almost kind of like enveloped by the screen and the sound. It was such a physical experience that, yeah, you almost felt like you were kind of shifting with the film as well. Yeah, it felt, it felt like a nightmare to me. And that is how I felt about Dunkirk, the way that the bombs would just whiz past and you, and you don't know where they're going, who they're going to hit, who they're aimed at. And Tenant is also very much about the the unseen, unknowable threat. And I liked as well having that contrasted with all the sort of spy trappings. You have like John David Washington, who is just very Bond-esque in this. He's so charismatic and so cool and just, yeah, he's a better Bond than Bond. I'm very sorry, Daniel Craig, but he would be a fantastic Bond. Uh, and then having these exotic locations, the the chilly British dames, like Elizabeth Tabicki's mm -hmm. cat. Um, the, the, the Michael Caine scene, which is brilliant. 
Yes. I mean, it's like 45 seconds of this just kind of comedic sort of little scene that's in there, but it's so brilliant. Having a go at British snobbery, (laughs) which is very funny. (laughs) Um, I will say some some of the lines are are a little bit clunky. There's the one where he's getting patted down by the security guard and he says, where I'm from, you have to buy me dinner first. (laughs) <laughs> but I think Nolan does at least acknowledge in this film that his characters are a little bit two-dimensional. I mean, the protagonist, that's the name of the main character, is the protagonist. I had a little bit more of an issue with Elizabeth Debicki's cat, which I know he's moved on from the dead wife trope here, but she's still very much defined by the men in her life. It's the son that she's not allowed to see and the husband that has control over her. And I do feel like she spends most of the film just going, my son. What about, and there's all these things happening and she's in the middle just going, but what about, how will this affect my son, my son? Uh, which I, I found a little bit grating after a while, but I like as well the, the way that he he dealt with the, the pure threat of male violence. I mean, Kenneth Branagh's Sir Chuckles, terrifying in this movie. Mm-hmm. And I think his performance is one of the most interesting ones because it's, it's unexpected and it, it sort of, encapsulates the unexpected tension of this movie and the unexpected terror of it, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, because he's kind of... Yeah, it's it's, it's almost like all these kind of blocks that add up to the tension that you kind of get and are back, you know, back to to the idea that you... There's so much unveiled as you go through the film sort of thing as well. It's kind of the tension, that point of tipping almost. is like it's almost past the point of being able to cope with it in a way. Yeah, and and a thing with his character is you never quite know what he's going to do or if there's going to be a breaking point because he appears quite calm and collected and hello, yes, and and there's this underlying threat of at any point he's going to snap mm. and then it's going to get really scary. Yeah. I mean, to make one of those shipping boats look sexy as well, I mean, it's just like... It's kind of like as as you know as he's pulling himself. He up does a lot of pull ups. Oh, pull That's the one on thing I didn't understand. Sexy yellow boat sort of thing. It's he's just like, a man who's wow. like, I gotta keep doing. Pull-ups I mean, I'm not a boat person, point. but I'm like, you know, I take that boat over like the Russians boat and the you know the kind of fancy yacht. It's like, wow, look at that sexy yellow boat. It's a good boat. Just looks brilliant as well. I think it's just and it was interesting what he was saying in the interview about you know working with a new editor and the fact that he went with um with Al who's done such intimate stories. You know, Francis Ha and Mark story and it's it's kind of interesting that choice I think that he's gone with for that as well. Because I think it, it, it's bringing that huge action scale down to the point where it feels quite claustrophobic. I yeah. think it's quite claustrophobic film even though it's this giant action movie that is going across different countries and times and things. Yeah. You want to see it again? Yeah. Yeah definitely. I mean to find out what actually happened. <laughs> <laughs> you got me Nolan. I am definitely going to go and see it again. 